Yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. Yo, 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 what up, though? Take money in the what's, building. How you doing? What's the deal, man? What's the deal? Hey, man, we in Detroit. Detroit native, man. Welcome to Mogul State of Mind. Uh, what part of Detroit you from? The East Side. East Side. East, East Warren. Yeah. Hey, what, what is that like growing up on East Warren? Man, it's the trenches, man. It's, it's who made me. Yeah. I come off, you know, young. We, we outside all day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, in my hood... Ain't no street light times for the youngest. Mm -hmm. I was after the street light boy, and then my calling, I, I trash sports for a minute. Got you. So let's. You know, let, they trying to. Okay. Go ahead. So let's 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 unpack that a little bit. Being that, because you know, most people when they got parents, street lights come on. You better have your ass on. Yeah. What was your family dynamic like that allowed you to stay out beyond the street lights? It was like. I was I was disobedient, man. I mm. ain't, I ain't listen. So the street light calling to me was like, "Why you want me in the house? What happens after the street lights? Yeah. Come on, you feel me? I want to see. Yeah, what all the other kids be talking about? <laughs> what I did had to go in where the street lights was on. So I started shooting my shot, stand yeah. out. You feel me? Now, were you with your um? You grew up with your mom and your dad, or yeah, I stayed with my grandmother for your a grandma, while okay. and my mom and dad. Okay. I had a two parent home growing up. Got you. Like, was what was your dynamics with your father? Like, because usually they say young boys who got fathers in their lives tend not to even drift through the, to the streets. Yeah. See, I my father was a street nigga though. So mm, okay. That's why my two parent home went no different. They can't eight mile me. Yeah. My daddy was a street nigga, so me being at home, both my parents, I was still taught the street way too, mm. and how to. In game, like, he was a nigga that I felt like I ain't had to look up to nobody else. I had a good role model. Yeah. He was in the streets, but he wanted to come to an end. So when he had me, that was like his way out. You know what I'm saying? When did you become aware of the streets? Because, like, some kids, man, like like myself, man, you have a normal, even though, you know, I grew up on Joy Road. You know, you go out, you hoop, you play with your friends, you have a childhood. When did you become, at what age, become aware of the streets and start having that conversation with your parents? I say about 10, 11, I started getting in trouble mm -hmm. and being into the fascination of the street shit. Gotcha. Like, outside of my sports, like, I was real big on the sports shit. So that's why I feel for EST right now. Yeah. That's some weak shit they on. Because if you ain't grow up in the hood playing sports, you was lame for real. You yeah. feel me? It was about the top hoop nigga, top football nigga. Not baseball. No, not, not baseball. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it ain't, no, it ain't no shit to the baseball nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fighting, yeah. boxing. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was like once we got to that point, everything got to that. You learned in the streets with your homies, mm. and we was taking chances together. Got to. Uh, you can go ahead. You can give it to him. How does he? Get him lights to get you. Um, I'll wait till you finish, and then we'll pop, pop back in. All right. So here it is. You out with your partners. Like, when you jumped off in the streets, what what part of the streets were you into once you, you know what I'm saying, got out there? You mean as far as, like, what I was doing? Yeah, activities. At 10, that age. 11, like, we was just on the... Busting car windows, kicking garbage cans over, <laughs> you know, little bullshit. Yeah. As a youngin', but as my older teen years, I was I was a robber, man. Mm. I was in a robbing, gambling, just yeah. all the shit that you don't supposed to be doing. When you say robbing back then, uh, when you used to do that, yeah. Was it more so like robbing dope dealers? Yeah, it was business? always on the dope boy set. Gotcha. Langs. Mm. Like, niggas, I feel like, did whole shit to me. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? Or just a nigga I really didn't fuck with. I feel like if he was sweet eating. Yeah. That's how I, I feel like I started getting money first. W would you feel like the, the biggest lick you came up on, the amount wise? About, uh, about 16, 17, me and my man's. Hit one for about 20,000. Damn. Yeah. 
How y'all feel? Y'all bust that down? Oh, we bust that down. We was running around this bitch, New Jays, all <laughs> Jordan Joggies. Yeah. All, man, we was all off of skate land. Yeah. Having our way. It, At that time, a damn was some shit. Yeah, for sure. It, was there ever a time you had one that went wrong? Oh, yeah. Kind of tell well, me shit, that story. Well, shit, uh, one time me and my man was on a robbery and shit. Nigga wasn't going for it. So, you know, when a nigga ain't going for it, how that procedure go? Yeah. You start off, don't move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, he moved. Yeah. Rest is history. You feel me? The rest is history. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how that go. Got you. Um... So here it is, you out in the streets, you know. Of course, street can make a lot of money, but you end up going uh, to prison. Yeah, I ended up going to prison. That shit led me to really start understanding I was making the wrong moves and prison to tighten you up. How many times before you went to prison that you was locked up? I done been to that motherfucking county jail three, four, five times before they finally sent me to prison. Mm. So it was like me beating them all them times. I ain't think it was real. Yeah. Till I really got sat down. Got you. Sat me down for four years. I learned my lesson in that bitch, though. I learned that just the shit I was doing, I was, I've always been smart. You know what I'm saying? I just made bad decisions. Yeah. So. What you I end up found, going down for? I know? ended up going down for armed robbery. Armed robbery. Yeah. Did, how did they, how did they even know it was you? Like, who who put it together? Like, somebody told? We or? got caught afterwards. Uh, like, somebody called in on us on a card description. Got you. So we had got pulled over and shit. Got you. So when you go in, it's state or fed? State. State? Yeah. Okay, so where you get shit, where you have to do your bid at? Uh, Lapeer. I did a little time all over, for real. Lapeer, St. Louis. Okay. Uh, cold water. Yeah. yeah I've <clears> been to a few spots in Michigan. So when you get to prison, the politics of it all, like the mindset for you, what was it like? Was it was it a fear is Midwest prison politics? Is it gang politics? Is it city state yeah, politics? So when me starting off, yeah, like it was still off in the. It was when it first this gang shit first started going on. Mm. So for me, it wasn't like it wasn't nothing too crazy. I was already off into the streets, so no street man telling you gonna follow you, follow you to the joint. Yeah, niggas know what's going on before you get there. <laughs> they know you coming. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So. You gonna have certain niggas that when they get there, they gonna there's gonna be some niggas gonna shoot their shot. Mm. They gonna see if you really made up on the streets and is you made like that in the joint. But some niggas get there, they street mentality, bro. I just seen they come from the streets, nigga, a pit. He get to the joint, nigga, a bitch. Damn. I swear to God. Damn. I see it all the time, bro. Can you get through prison without even having an altercation, or that's not possible? I ain't going to say it ain't possible, but it's less likely. Yeah. It's like a nigga that's running too clear. They think you scared. So it's going to be somebody that's going to try something, whether it's a nigga running up on you and just trying to get a conversation out of you to see what you want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's going to become that time you're going to have to show up. Got you. Whether so, it's once. You so know what I'm saying? And that's it. So your first time getting tested in prison? Oh, yeah. I got it on. What, what, what was it over? Like some noodles or it some was, shit? No, it wasn't even over no noodles. It was a nigga just on the tough about cars and like everything mm. and they're passionate. When you when you playing sports and cars and yeah. gambling, it's all passionate. So I wasn't really fascinated on the bitch from other niggas and all that, especially when I don't know you. You ain't my man, so calling me a bitch and what I hear from in the streets, when they get in the joint, niggas try you. Yeah. I said, I'm a bitch, nigga, show me. Mm. And it went from there. Got you. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask you a question, <clears throat> and then we'll get into the your music journey and jumping into that side. But recently a video popped out of um King Von. Yeah. I'm in jail. And it's him talking to the, <clears throat> excuse me, it's him talking to an officer. And I guess he was trying to get PC. Mm -hmm. So he started acting like, uh, he was saying he was gay. Oh, yeah, I and seen it. was flirting it. through to the dudes inside yeah, I seen there. It. So people were speculating like that was a, a um a unit with a bunch of ops. Yeah. He ain't stupid. So he played this role to get moved somewhere else. I ain't gonna lie, it was smooth as hell. Yeah. Cause it's like you going to unit with your ops, you know what time it is. Yeah. 
It's go to and it wasn't like you got on a unit and it's just one op. You know you getting put on a whole unit with all ops. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. So he shot his move. Good look. That was a smooth <laughs> shit. <laughs> that was smooth shit. I ain't gonna lie. Now, another. And it wasn't like he was on there already. Yeah. He wasn't on a rock and then called in, hit the button on some PCC. Like, y'all ain't even putting me on there. Yeah. At all. It, it was another Chicago artist, Lil J. Mm -hmm. um, Lil J was shown on film with a, I guess, a transsexual male in prison sitting on his lap. Mm -hmm. Things of that nature. Do that really happen in yeah, prison? That, yeah, that go on. That go yeah. on. That's consensual shit, though. Yeah. I ain't all that old school 1960s shit. Niggas ain't getting raped. Yeah. Nigga doing that. Do, do that. If a person that's known as a gangster come out as gay, does that kill his street credibility? If so, why? Because how the fuck you go to prison and turn gay? Quite sure you I, I feel like, <laughs> nigga, you went to prison and you was already gay. Yeah, probably so. Before yeah. you went in. Yeah. Because ain't no way you go to the joint and just feel like, Oh, this my caller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you. This, this ain't your caller, nigga. This, this time to stand on 10. Yeah. There's other shit to do, man. For so, sure. Now, when it comes to music, you, you jump into this. Who are your inspiration? How did you get introduced to hip hop? How do you get into it? See, I used to bullshit around and rap when I was a teenager with my mans. Yeah. We had our own studio, all type of shit before this rap shit ever got big in Detroit. So during my time in the joint, I'm hearing it. Like Detroit getting put on on the rap shit. Yeah. And then I'm hearing my man's name ranking. My little homie that was one of the homies when I was out in my first beat, he was there with me, but he out now. I'm still in the joint. So I'm like, damn, the bitch Doug out there rapping. They're like, yeah, and he the one. So once Doug turning up, I'm on my way home. And he in the process of turning. So it's like, when I got home, he was in his almost in his prime. He was mm -hmm. getting signed by Gotti Baby. And I'm right there in the mix. So it was like, damn, I ain't coming from the joint to seeing this shit like that. This shit I watch on TV. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, damn. I don't wanna rob no more my life. You know what I'm saying? In a different direction. Not my nigga almost rich. I don't want to jeopardize no shit with him. Yeah. You feel me? So I just looked at it a whole different way. So that, that, he that was my you. calling right there. Like, fuck it, I'm finna try it. So what year into your bid was this when you start seeing Doug pop up? It was my last year. Your last year. Yeah. It was my last year. I probably had like eight months left. Gotcha. And I had seen him pop up on a, at a fight with Tony Harris. Mm. And Doug was walking him out. Hard. Hard shit. And Tony Harrison got his ass beat, man. I'm sick. I lost so much motherfucking money. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah, doggy walked him out. <laughs> you have a baby looking crazy. You know? Hey, well, Dallas going through that right now with Errol Spence. So yeah, I, I, <laughs> <for sure. laughs> you know what that's like. Um, okay, so you home. Uh, immediately, do you connect with Doug? As yeah. soon as you get out? What yeah. was that, that homecoming like, meeting up with him? What was the game or what did he put you on to further your career? See, at first it was just like this this is my brother, so I'm with him. Like I'm I'm really on some hype man shit. Yeah. I'm just happy for my brother. You feel me? I really wasn't even looking back into the rap shit like that yet. Until we get to going on tours and you know what I'm saying? I'm really seeing it now. I'm in the lifestyle. So it was like my brother always used to be on some sign of other niggas. Like, yeah, I might sign dog and get him a deal. And, Hold on, man. Let me try this shit. Yeah. See if I get me a deal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I start rapping. Yeah. And I I start rapping at home, trying it again at home. So I called my cousin, fully blown. Like, I'm finna try this shit. Listen to this right quick. So I FaceTime him on one phone and got the rapping off the other phone, playing the beat on the other phone. Cause like, but you can do it. Might got something, nah. You know what I'm saying? So I started doing it, nah. I started booking my own sessions. What What was that aha moment for yourself that you like? You know what? I'm, I'm actually good though. Like I'm good at doing this. I ain't like I probably I probably just got good like a year ago. Mm. 
That what first we, house, I used to ran fast as hell. Frank I Twister or some shit? ABK Twister. Okay. <laughs> I was in that bed. Yeah. So, and rap, I feel like once you find yourself, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, all right, this shit hard right here. This is what I want to stick with. So I feel like a year I found my swag in like a year. And uh, being consistent, though, like my brother was like, nigga, if you going to do it, do it. So I started booking my own sessions. Without him, he ain't even there. And then when it came times to where he and that bitch, I'm trying to jump on a song with him. Every song he do, I'm trying to get on that bitch. So we started building our catalog up. And then I, after I knew it, I was a rapper. Yeah. If, a rapper now. If you could define your style, how would you define it? I'm turned. Like, my energy. I'm an energy rapper, like. Mm, like, you drill type? What, what is it? Your I got I got all bags. All mm. of them going to be turned. If I'm talking drill, it's going to be turned. I'm talking getting money is gonna be turned. Mm. You know, I'm talking hoes is gonna be turned. Everything yeah. I'm I'm doing is gonna be energy. It's gonna be fun. I'm, a nigga gonna feel me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I've been through all this shit. I'm talking about. So so right now you got a project out. Yeah. Can I talk about the uh, the project, man? The name of it with songs on it. Any features, producers on it that's notable? Yeah, it's called I Turned It Up. Mm. Uh, I got flexing on the beat on that bitch. I got uh, two sides on there. I got uh, uh, JP. Okay. Out in Cali. He out from Cali. On the feature side, I, I, I really like rapping with my niggas. Yeah. So I got I got a doggy on there, of course. I got my nigga E. Will on that bitch. Wineski. Mm. Reek. My guys, for real. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like you in a battle for your name? To become like, cause Tay Money is such a common name for rappers. Yeah, I feel like niggas got off and phoned me. Because it's a white girl down in Dallas. I heard right there, Tay Money. I, I seen her when I first typed my name in. Yeah. She's smooth though. <laughs> I seen her when I first typed yeah, my name in. She cool though. Yeah. Yeah, she was talking some little shit on her. Yeah, you don't mind sharing it with her? No, nah, she she a female. Yeah. Yeah, we can share it. Got you. But with you, all the other monies, though, I'm finna remove that. Yeah. Remove them, okay. They don't know. They gonna feel me. So with the um the project out right now, music that's out that's out right now. If it's something that you feel like best represents you in a song or video, what would it be for people to go check in right now? Uh, they go look at whole gang bus. Okay, that's how I really popped it off. So I, I I'm always love that song. That's how everybody like damn. He be with dog rap too. Yeah. So that's my shit. Whole gang bus. I say go check that out. Hey, well, I'll tell you what. Hey, Tay Money, man. I appreciate you sitting down with me. Yeah. And project out right now. Say the name one more time. Tay Money. Uh, I turned it up. I turned it up. Yeah. Hey, man. Well, you always welcome here on Mogul State of Mind, my guy. Until we meet again. For sure. Appreciate it, bro. Peace. Yeah.